we are pleased to announce that starting June 1, 2023, the national minimum wage will increase from 9,000 per 40 hour week to 13,000 per 40 hour week. Are now going to be getting and compare them to what elsewhere in the Caribbean is paying. So the Prime Minister of Jamaica, for instance... Yeah, uh, so we know that these salaries... I mean, we've done our homework. So I don't know so that these you know, salaries you know, put... You don't want put, me to share with the public. Put, put parliamentarians no, and ministers no, man, in Jamaica higher than any other which is why country in the Caribbean you're region. You're trying to stop me from sharing No, I'm not. Okay, so I let, am saying let to you, me I'm, I'm familiar with it, but my, and I'm my sharing it as well. are not. So right, let go me go ahead go very ahead. quickly. Prime Minister for Jamaica is going to be over 25 million. Trinidad and Tobago Prime Minister is 13 million. Bahamas, 13. Minister of Finance for Jamaica, 21.7 million. Trinidad and Tobago, 9 million. I'm quoting everything in Jamaican dollars. Bahamas, 10.2 million. In Jamaica, Cabinet Minister will be at 20.2 million. Trinidad and Tobago, 9 million. Bahamas, 10.2. And an MP in Jamaica will be at 12.5. Trinidad and Tobago, 3.8. Bahamas, 4.3. How on earth do we justify these levels of salaries in a country that we're certainly doing far worse than Bahamas? And when you look at what is happening elsewhere in the region, there's absolutely no justification okay, for this, surely. Okay. So, uh, again, we're, first of all, Barbados, Trinidad, and Bahamas have not entered into public sector restructuring. Uh, the way in which they have recovered from COVID has not put them in a position that they can add this amount to their wage bill to pay their public sectors. Jamaica is the only country in the region coming out of a pandemic that's been able to offer these levels of adjustments to its public service. And why secondly, secondly, given what we're seeing in terms of our level of development and our per capita income compared to those other yes, countries? Right, because of what we are going through, the experience that we have, Dion, we are unable to attract and retain the talent that we need to run the public bureaucracy. That is going to change in salaries alone will not fix it, but it will go a long way. The Jamaica Teachers Association and the Police Federation are reacting to the massive salary hike for the political directorate. More in the support from Kerry Ann Simpson. We are not envious of any package received by any public service worker. We are simply asking for a livable wage. That reaction from President of the Jamaica Teachers Association, Lasani Harrison, following the announcement of the more than 200% salary hike for the political directorate. I recall the Minister of Finance in his opening debate in the Parliament on March 7th to say that teachers are magicians are the magicians not deserving. Mrs. Harrison says there are several unresolved issues in the compensation review that the government is yet to iron out for teachers. From April 18th, we have sent a letter to the Ministry of Finance and we are yet to be called to the table. And as for the Police Federation, Chairman Corporal Rowan James says members are up in arms. I am not in a position to say to our membership that we can work overtime because of the lack of remuneration or mechanism to remunerate them for work being done in excess of 40 hour work week it is excessive in light of the fact that we were told that the country is not within that aspect of budget and we should hold strain uh, i i verily believe that uh, at this time that they, what has been meted out is a slap in the face and an abuse to us as public servants. The presidents say the government's trust deficit has only been widened. This needs to do some serious introspection as to the damage that this will cause in terms of relationship and communication as well as productivity. You. Where is the transparency in the process? The teachers of this nation are deserving of the transparency in the process and for the release of the formulas used to get us to the place that we are at. 
and whatever is rightly due to us, we need to get same. In the meantime, trade unionist Vincent Morrison says he is not opposed to the increases given to the political directorate, but argues that the issue of public sector compensation should be equitable, particularly for workers at lower levels. Kerry and Simpson. An underpaid political class cannot deliver what the country demands. That's the word from Prime Minister Andrew Holness in defending the decision by his government to give a better pay to parliamentarians. We sat in the cabinet and we agonized even whether or not we should even take any increase. Not something that we took lightly because we know that there are persons who will try to make political fodder over it. As a country, what has plagued us is that we have treated the political class with schizophrenia and disdain. The truth is you get the quality of governance that you elect. And every government is afraid to touch it because if you touch it, people say you don't deserve it. Why we should pay you more and the country not running well? The country not running well. Because of that very reason, you have chosen to have an underpaid political class. How must they deliver? You sound like a post, you know. I'm about to shut the fuck up, yeah, man. The boy, man.